Allow me to sing you the ballad of Package Cuck, without singing it, as I'm a terrible singer. The Package Cuck's real name is Jules Suzdaltstev. There's no way I'm pronouncing that right. He's a journalist who formerly worked for Discovery and Now This News. You know, the guys who put out those viral shorts with Now in the Corner, who kinda quietly disappeared a few years ago? Yeah, he worked on those. Before that, he wrote for Vice, but nowadays he's just the Package Cuck. Here's the viral tweet that gave him his new identity. So, my neighbor in the apartment next door just blatantly stole two of my packages. He even went downstairs to grab the second one, because the first one was so big. He's older, so I just popped over like, hey, I think you made her grab my packages by mistake. He goes, no. <laughs> what a giga chad. He's just like, no. The attached video is from a doorbell camera, showing the guy just casually walking over, stealing package cucks packages, and then walking back to his place. And look, here's my dilemma. This dude is weird, but also the best neighbor I've ever had. He's dead silent, he never complains about the noise level, I record a show that requires me to shout at full volume, and he has his windows blacked out, so I have the entire fire escape to myself. Again, very weird. He might be chopping up bodies in there, I don't know, but I don't want him evicted. I'm obviously not going to call the cops over paper towels, so I'm just like, I guess I do nothing? If he moved out, any other neighbor would be worse for my situation. As much as I try to soundproof my closet to record my show, I am 100% sure he can hear me, and it's got to be annoying. I'm kind of trying to rationalize the fact that sometimes my packages might get stolen, but that's the price I'm paying for never being bothered otherwise? Anyway, just crazy. He answered the door shirtless and was just like, nope, don't know what you're talking about. Actually, I'm really sick right now. Bye. Does he not know what a ring camera looks like? No, dude, he just knows you're not going to do anything. So he doesn't care if your ring camera captures him stealing your packages. In fact, it kind of sounds like you deserve it, frankly. Also, like, obviously by now he's opened them. I don't want them back. I already had Amazon send out new ones. And like, I don't want him to pay me for them. They didn't cost me any more to get resent. I feel like this is the kind of post where anyone who doesn't live in New York will be like, call the cops. And anyone who does will be like, leave him alone. Blessed that he doesn't do worse. And I honestly agree. Jesus Christ, living in New York sounds like fucking hell, bro. This guy became known as Package Cuck because, yeah, while it is dumb getting into a fight over paper towels, he didn't even stand up for himself at all. He doesn't even have the self-respect, the dignity, to get angry at the guy who stole from him. Instead, he's posting about how he's cool with it. In fact, when one of his followers says, rationalize it as if you bought your good neighbor some groceries, he just agrees. What the fuck, dude? Of course, after this guy got dragged on Twitter for being the package cuck, he replied with, I've realized a massive social divide. Those who understand the pros and cons of community and the upside of valuing your actual quality of life versus those who are deeply antisocial and can only interact with the world through rigid rule abiding and revenge fantasies. Man, when those communists talk about the community or communal living or collective ownership, I guess they really do mean that your shit heel neighbor will steal your stuff, and the more they steal, the more communal it is. There is no way in hell Package Cuck will ever watch my video. So if you want, clip this bit up and send it to him. The only deeply antisocial person here is the guy who stole your stuff. He violated the social contract, and you have given him a license to continue doing so until he's stopped. He does not consider you a fellow brother of humanity, worthy of moral consideration. And when you continue to extend that status to him anyway, you invite him to exploit you further. So, as funny as the story is, the reason the clip is not just a TikTok Tuesday entry or something is because, as always, there's something deeper going on here. The name Package Cuck builds off of the previous Bike Cuck, where the cartoonist Shen Comics created a short comic that continues to be reposted over and over up to the present day, due to its incredible versatility. Like the Red Letter Media Consume Product thing, or any number of Stone Toss comics. The Bike Cuck comic has the titular Shen declare that his bike was stolen recently, and that he's pretty sad about it. But then he thinks that whoever stole it was probably more happy to get it than he was to lose it. Therefore, the total happiness of the world increased, so it was okay. The character of Shen is a stand-in for the cartoonist, as is the case for many webcomics of this type. And it's generally believed that the real-life Shen had his bike stolen, and this was his actual reaction. So he's now known as the Bike Cuck. The calculation that Shen performs here regarding the world's total happiness, this is a basic utilitarian idea. Utilitarianism is an ethical system where actions that create the greatest good for the greatest number of people are what we should consider moral. There are some real problems with utilitarianism, but I don't want to get into a retarded philosophy of ethics conversation today. Let's just do the basic critique. Assume that Bike Cuck lost one point of happiness and the guy who stole his bike gained two points of happiness. If the goal is the most happiness for the most people, then stealing the bike is a moral act. But it's obviously not a moral act, because simply pursuing the most happiness doesn't mean that an act is moral. The part of the conversation that's missing here is consent. And as I mentioned in my video from years ago called Consent is Deontological, consent is, well, deontological. Deontology means rules-based morality. When you give your consent, what you're doing on a technical level is outlining a set of rules. Let's say you consent to sex with somebody, but you only want to do missionary. That is an informal set of rules. Rule one, yes to missionary sex. Rule two, no to other types of sex. 
This is why when it comes to moral codes that only focus on consequences, like some forms of utilitarianism, consent can actually be ignored if the utility of the act is high enough. This is the utility monster problem, and oh my god, we're having the retarded philosophy of ethics conversation. A utility monster is somebody who enjoys a specific resource significantly more than your average person. Assume that your average human eats a cookie and gets one unit of happiness. Now assume that a true die-hard cookie lover eats a cookie and gains 100 units of happiness. A true utilitarian system would allocate all cookies to the utility monster, assuming no diminishing returns, because giving cookies to anyone else would be a waste of happiness. In fact, if a normal person has a cookie, worth one happiness to him, and stealing it from him would give him ten unhappiness, it would still be moral to steal it from him and give it to the utility monster, because the happiness penalty for violating his consent doesn't overcome the happiness the utility monster gains. That is what's being appealed to in the Bike Cuck comic, even taking into account Shen's unhappiness at his ownership of the bike and his consent both being violated, because the thief gains more happiness than Shen lost, Shen is okay. The problem with this view is that Shen is taking the position of the objective observer looking at the total system and all of its distributed happiness. But in actuality, Shen is not an objective observer. He is a subjective person within the system, directly affected by another agent within it, and his desire to be objective has rendered him incapable of asserting his own position against the person infringing on him. This is also the problem with package cuck. These people are cucks, not because their partner is fucking someone else or something. They are ethically cuckolded because they are incapable of asserting the moral legitimacy of their own subjective position against their infringers due to some appeal to an objective position outside of the system which, in reality, doesn't actually exist because we're all humans with subjective positions and none of us are actually capable of floating above the system like some disembodied spirit. In other words, if you are not capable of asserting your own position against others advancing on you, no one else is going to do it for you. This is a problem with the broader left, socialists and progressives and democrats alike. They are incapable of asserting their own position as good, even if that position is subjective, and instead they appeal to a non-existent neutrality or objectivity, a move that leaves them personally in a weakened position. Here's some more examples of this. Remember Chaz, that anarchist autonomous zone that broke away from the city of Seattle for a little while in the wake of George Floyd's death? Remember the whole unplanned donation meme that came out of it? Well, for those of you who aren't in the know, one of the random, bright-eyed communists participating in their little insurrection posted this to the Chaz subreddit. Lock and secure your tents before leaving. Carry your valuables with you at all times. This happened two hours ago, and I'm still recovering from the shock, as all my valuables have been stolen. I came back from a walk to my tent, and all my valuable items are gone. My laptop, power banks, cash of $400, and my entire bag with a week's worth of supplies are gone. People are helping me look, but no luck so far. It's just too chaotic. People are constantly walking around the tents all the time. One of the replies he received went viral and started the meme. You don't exactly know what happened to your belongings, only that they vanished. So to say that it's theft is not entirely fair. It could be that a disadvantaged resident was in greater need of the items than you, and that's what we're about as a community. I know it's hard to hear, but treat this as an unplanned donation. This is a fucking unhinged take, dude, and it was rightfully laughed at. But look at it through the lens of the retarded philosophy of ethics stuff. The normal moral position, the consent-based position, the subjective position of the person being stolen from is that he was infringed upon, he's the victim. But the activist is saying, no, 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 the unhappiness you felt is more than offset by the greater happiness of the needier person who took the items. Therefore, the total happiness in the world increased, as Bike Cuck would say. A donation is when somebody voluntarily gives something up to help others, to improve the lives of others at their own expense. Replacing theft with the phrase unplanned donation is saying that since the consent difference between giving somebody your stuff and somebody taking your stuff contains no additional moral content, at least in their ethical system, theft and donation are therefore the same thing, and the only moral consideration is whether or not the total happiness in the world increased. In other words, the activist is saying to the victim, look at this from the position of the total system of utility. If you try to assert your own subjective position, you are acting less morally. There are other examples that I unfortunately just can't find. They're buried deep in the backlog of the internet somewhere. One of them was a white woman from years ago who was raped by a black man in some Caribbean country and wrote an article about her experiences. She explained in the article that she wasn't angry at him as her rapist had suffered under the colonial violence of her ancestors and she was proud to experience what she called post-colonial reparations. Another example was of a woman who was raped by a migrant somewhere in Europe and refused to report him to the police because she didn't want him to be deported. I can't find either article though. While looking for them, I discovered that recently Law & Order SVU ran an episode that basically used this logic as a storyline, where a white woman was sexually assaulted and refused to assist the police in apprehending her attacker because he was a black teenager and she didn't want him to be a victim of systemic police violence. And even though she ultimately didn't do this, there was this common belief on the right that the woman whose lefty activist boyfriend was killed by the very type of person he advocated for actually defended his killer because he was systemically disadvantaged. 
She didn't do this, but it became a meme and later a true belief on the right because this type of thing actually does happen on the left regularly. The right was just wrong this time. All of these examples are instances where some flavor of leftist ideology has caused a person to take up an objective view of things, even though that objectivity completely disempowers them in the type of situation where they should be asserting their own position. Progressivism and socialism both do this to people's thought processes, despite their differences. This is a problem with the broader left's thinking, and it's also pretty well documented. Several studies have replicated the well-known phenomenon of left-leaning white people being the only demographic to have an active outgroup racial bias. Meaning, in America, most people have an affinity towards their own race. White, black, Hispanic, and Asian were all measured. This bias changes somewhat with political alignment, though white people consistently have the weakest in-group bias. However, it's left-leaning whites that are the only group who actively prefer other races to their own. This should come of no surprise to anybody who's observed the rampant white guilt on the American left. Anytime you hear a leftoid say, whites have no culture, or we must decolonize whiteness, or any other flavor of white people are the problem, that's what we're getting at here. White leftists are utterly demoralized against their own people to the point of self-hatred. It's not just a racial thing, though. The often cited study, Ideological Differences in the Expanse of the Moral Circle, famously showed that in a more general sense, left-leaning people have a greater outgroup preference than right-leaning people. You've probably seen this posted all over the internet, figure 5 from this study. The center of the circle represents people that are more closely connected to you, like family and friends. As you move to the outer rings, you start to pass by humans you don't know, other animals and bugs, other alien life forms that may or may not exist, and eventually the inanimate matter that makes up the majority of the universe. The heat maps in the circles are concentrations of moral consideration. What's being said here is that right-leaning people place more moral value on their friends and family, while left-leaning people place more moral value on the universe itself. In a very general sense, the right values what is most close to them, while the left values what is furthest from them. This makes sense to me. If taking up the most objective position possible in order to make system-wide happiness calculations is the moral move, then valuing the universe over the people you know is exactly what a leftist would do. And so, that is what our package cuck does. It doesn't matter to him that he's been personally slighted. He doesn't recognize things like honor or dignity as moral virtues. It doesn't matter to him that he's been materially deprived, as the great material wealth and productive capacity of Amazon has already filled in that gap. And it doesn't matter to him that the person he's living next to is a degenerate, because it could always be worse, right guys? I can't imagine thinking like he does. You have a moral obligation to make it worse. He's wronged you. It's not about revenge fantasies, it's about what is proper. Package Cuck and the many, many people like him who make up the left wing are the kind of people who believe that if you show weakness to an aggressor, if you simply retreat enough, then the invading party will discover mercy and show you some grace. They will not. Morality means treating people fairly, and sometimes treating people fairly means making them understand that you will not allow yourself to be abused. And sometimes making them understand that means escalation, not cowering away in your apartment. People like Package Cuck actively make the world a worse place by emboldening abusers, by teaching them that they are free to exploit others with no repercussions. It's not just the degenerates that are making big lefty cities unbearable to live in, it's also the defenders of the degenerates, who are paradoxically also their victims. 